Insightful Podcasts by Informative Hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 86. We're having another Q&A series this week. We're talking about philosophy, politics, and stuff. I couldn't categorize the last group of questions. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my inquisitive and trustworthy co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing pretty fine. How was school this week? Not too bad. I didn't really have any major issues this week, so things are looking good. Excellent, excellent. Uh, before we get started, I would uh, ask folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get us on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and pretty much any place that you can get your podcasts. I would also encourage folks to reach out to us. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. You can get us on Instagram at insights into things, or you can get links to all of our social media and contact information on our website at www.insights into things. Now, are we ready to get into it? Sure. So the first category that we're going to start out with is philosophy. Oh, yay. At least that's sort of what I kind of threw some of these questions in as because they kind of didn't fit in other categories either. So ah. this is kind of the, uh, the, the bottom of the bucket here are the questions that we had through all the other Q&A series, but they didn't fit elsewhere. And I threw the politics section in just as a follow-up to our you running for president last week. So I thought that would be kind of fun. All righty. So we have 20 questions in this first segment. Ready to go? Sure. All right. Here we go. Question one. When do you feel a teen becomes an adult? Okay. So a lot of people will probably say, like, when they get from the age category, like, 18... 1920 like 20 or 21 is what someone becomes an adult and in mo and i mean that is the definition of an adult someone who no longer is from the age of um zero years old to 19 um that's basically the rest of it is pretty much an adult until like you get slightly older but then um, but I don't think then it's... you're an old adult. <laughs> <laughs> but that, but I don't really feel as though it's an age thing. It's more of an accepting reality and responsibility kind of thing to me. Like, there are plenty of 21-year-olds who are definitely not the most responsible people um, on the planet. Because, like... 21, you can still do bad stuff, and you can still act immature. And I feel as though when a teen becomes an adult, it would be more of, like, them accepting responsibility, them um, getting a job or getting something that pays them well, and it would be them accepting responsibility, taking care of themselves, and finding a place in the world. So it's less an age than more a status. Or maturity level. All right, I'll buy that. Question two. What three things are you most grateful for? Okay. 
Uh, the first thing is you and mommy. You guys are great parents, and I don't think I could ask for um anything better. I don't well, think. Thank you. I don't think there is anything better at this point. So I'm definitely grateful for both of you. I'm also grateful for the fact that I have a roof over my head. I know a lot of people don't have that luxury, and even if they did have a roof over their heads, um, they might not be in the best of conditions. Okay. Um, so I'm grateful for that. And I'm also grateful for the fact that I'm healthy now, especially with everything going on. I am grateful that I'm healthy, most of us are healthy, and that we have a decent lifestyle going on. Okay. Very, uh... Mature things to be grateful for. I think kids your age probably would be grateful for slightly more materialistic things under normal conditions. So, kudos to you. Question three. What do you feel are the most important things to living a great life? Okay, so there's a lot of things. One would obviously be having some good, some type of good financial um, status because... You really can't survive without having some type of money because you need to get food and water and you need a roof over your heads, which having a roof over your head is also pretty important to living a good life. But another thing is strong and healthy relationships. Um, we've talked about relationships in the past and um, one of the main benefits of having good relationships is having them to support you when you need them most. And I feel as though having good relationships can help and benefit in many different aspects of your life. So definitely having good relationships with people and having strong relationships with the people close to you is definitely um, something important that will help you in life. Okay. Um, good so, answer. Yeah. Another you. very mature answer. Question four. When someone is feeling stressed... What are three suggestions you'd share with them to help de-stress them? Well, yeah, um, I definitely am kind of a pro on this because I have been stressed a lot and you guys have helped me. Um, one of the things I do is try to tell them to step away from whatever is making them stressed and to take a breather because that's basically what you need to do. Um, that's kind of the first step in stopping you from being stressed. You need to step away and calm yourself down because if you don't calm yourself down, you're not going to think rationally. I've had that happen to me m many times before, and stepping back has always helped me. Okay. Another thing would be to identify the problem, like we said before in our problem-solving podcasts, and almost, I mentioned in almost every podcast now, um, identifying the problem that you're dealing with is definitely a major thing to help you realize like what is causing you the stress and how can we fix it it's kind of like that um so yeah identifying the problem and having the problem solving skills would definitely help you stop being stressed and another thing is if you are a little too stressed and walking away doesn't entirely help you might want to lash out a bit. Like, you can scream, you can cry, you can, like, so squeeze. So, vent. You need to vent kind of a vent. little bit. Yeah. yeah you, get, you need to vent a little bit. Okay. Good answers. Good answers. Have, they, have these techniques helped you? Yeah. Um, the walking away, I um, have done before. And it's definitely helped because getting away from the thing that's been stressing me out really works. And I and when I relax and calm down um and step away from all the chaos going on that has caused me to be stressed definitely works um identifying the problem that is something that i've tried to be doing but of course not always um i'm not always mentally prepared for which is why stepping back or venting would probably be one of the first steps you should do um before you identify the problem um, okay. because you don't think rationally when you're stressed. And for venting, I've done venting before. Mommy will ask me to vent whenever I really have, like, too much going on. Like, if you have, like, a medium amount of stress, you can probably just, like, go and calm yourself down. But if you have too much built-up stress, you probably need to, um, lash out a bit. Yep. I think you're, you're absolutely right there. Question five. How would you explain the word love to someone without using the word love? Okay, um, for this word, 
I'm going to say that it doesn't have to be... I'd say that it would be more of relationship type, whether it be family, friends, or a romantic interest that you want, that um, you have. I'd say that this would be showing affection to the people who um, you hold close and having a strong relation and that you have a strong relationship with. Okay. That works. And affection can mean anything like giving them a hug, you know, um, making them feel better, stuff like that. And, like, you know, there's also the materialistic side, so yeah. Okay, that works. Question six. Think of the worst thing that's happened to you, and what did you learn from it? Uh, okay. Going back on my traumatic experiences. Huh. You just... I think... I think getting lost on Space Mountain has to top the list of the most dramatic stuff that's happened to me. Um, so I'll say that's one of the worst things that happened to me. I got lost. And what I learned from it, um, I learned that, um, well, I learned that I should probably try and stick with mommy as best I can. Um, of, although we really couldn't do much. Um, there was really no error on our part because there were two exits and we had no idea, like, who was at which one. And we had, like, it was the first time I'd been on Space Mountain, so. Um, but we learned to keep, um, contact with each other, which kind of prompted me to get my own cellular device so that I could, um, communicate with you guys whenever, um, I didn't see you or if I didn't know where I was. Right. Okay. Uh, where are we at? Question seven. If you were told that you would live forever, what would you change about your life? Hmm. I try not to be as procrast... I tried not to procrastinate as much. Uh, kind of like the shirt says? Yeah, kind of like the shirt. Kind of like the shirt. Um, I don't normally procrastinate on schoolwork. I mainly procrastinate on other stuff, like... Occasionally, I'll procrastinate on something I'm working on, a drawing, the video, and sometimes I don't always check on laundry when I need to. So, um, yeah, I I would try not to procrastinate as much because I'd get a lot more done. Okay, I'll buy that. Uh, how would you make an impact on the world as a teenager? How can you make an impact on the world as a teenager? Okay, so there's a lot of things that restricts teenagers, um, but that doesn't mean we can't do nothing. Um, although we are restricted in things we can do, like, we can't normally, um, I don't know, drive around and, um, I don't know, honk our horns, at, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, like, any specific, like, restrictions off the top of my head right now. Um, but I do know that teenagers could make a difference by trying to show their beliefs, like joining peaceful protests, like um, joining peaceful protests on major events going on, stuff that they believe that should um, change. And um, so inspiring others to take action or something along those lines. Yeah, and like another big thing is that they can use social media because I'm pretty sure most teenagers have social media unless you're not very um unless you don't really use social media like me, but you know. Right. Okay, good enough. So this is kind of a a tough hypothetical question. If you were in a situation where you could save a person, but by saving that person your actions might let 10 other people die. Is that okay? Okay, so it depends. Um, okay, that's, uh, uh mm. I wouldn't really say that it is okay, unless, like, there was a way to save the rest of them, or, um, at least more than one of them, because, like, you can't, you shouldn't really let 10 people die just to save one life. I mean, on some occasions, yes, it would be better um, to save that one person. Um, but letting, like, 
if you know that there's another option where you could save more people and let less people die, then you'd probably want to go for that option, because I don't think, like, ten people dead, one life saved is really a good ratio. So the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Mm-hmm. Okay, by that. Question 10, if we halfway through the list here. Awesome. Is there such a thing as free will? Uh, yes, because I'm going to use an example for te- for kids and their parents. Um, kids, when they're very young, they have a lot of restrictions and um, they need to follow the rules of their parents along with the rules of society. And um, as they get older... Um, their parents lift up the restrictions a bit, making sure they use it responsibly, and then eventually society begins to lift some of the restrictions. So, I think that there is such a thing as free will, but um, it still comes with rules that you need to follow. Okay. What do you think rules a person's personality more? Nature or nurture? And let me explain what that actually means. Nature is a person's going to behave the way that a person is naturally. That's just their their personality, their genetics, or whatever. Nurture is about how they were brought up, how you know their parents teaching them right and wrong and morals and stuff like that. So, what do you think ultimately defines a person's personality more? Is it the nature side or the nurture side? Okay, um, I'd say that they're both equal because nurture is how your parents teach you their morals and what they, uh, and what some of their beliefs are, and then nature is something that came naturally or you develop it over time. And, um, I'd say that they're both equal opportunities, um, to shape a person's personality because, um, on the nurture, on the nurture side, you have the parents teaching them morals, beliefs, while on the, while on the nature side, you get their hobbies and some of the things they like and dislike. And all the, and ultimately, nature and nurture can go impact every single aspect. Although most of the time, nurture impacts morals and beliefs, while nature impacts hobbies, likes, and dislikes. Okay, interesting take on that. Uh, Where are we at? We are on question 12. Can we know happiness without sadness? Hmm. I'd say... Not really. Because happiness without sadness would just be feeling would just be feeling the positive side and i i've noticed that when people feel the positive of something and don't experience the negative they don't seem to appreciate it as much um kind of like um kind of like how we were saying before with the three things that I um, appreciate where some kids would um, have more materialistic things, most of the time it's because they don't really um, fully understand when they don't fully understand what they have and um, therefore can't fully be grateful for it. And this is the same thing with happiness and sadness. Um, one of the things I know about is that you can't, you don't learn to appreciate the positives when it, until it's taken away from you. Um, and I think this is sort of the same premise because sadness is basically the opposite, uh, the opposite of happiness and your happiness gets taken away and turns into sadness. And then you really need to appreciate like the positive side, because if you have a negative outlook, like, if you had a positive, I'm going to try and go for the negative and positive outlook on things. Like, if you constantly, um, if you constantly are positive and one major negative effect happens, you don't really appreciate stuff that, like, the thing that you have until it gets taken away or destroyed, and then you realize, oh no, I need to be grateful for that. Right, it's too late at that point, right? 
Mm-hmm. Interesting. Let's flip that question a little bit and ask, can we understand good without evil? This is kind of the same premise. Like, being good, well, actually, being good, you don't really need to have evil to be good. Being good is helping problems, no matter if it's evil or not. Like, some things you really can't control, the evil really doesn't do. It's just natural stuff that um, good people do. Evil is sort of just in there to, like, mess up stuff and have the heroes be even more power and have the good be more be- be even better than before um but it's still kind of the same premise like if evil was taken away you then like before evil you wouldn't really understand like the good um well with evil you wouldn't really understand like the other little things that um good does when there's something going on um but and you'd only like focus on evil because evil does something major and then the good has to um, stop that, and then it gets everyone's attention. But then when the evil's gone, and the good begins to, um, do all the little things it did before, then people begin to appreciate it. Okay. I like that. Thank you. Where is the line between art and not art? Okay. I believe that art is something that you put effort in, something that you're passionate about, and something that you at least want to try in. Um, you can't just, like, slap a bunch of, like, you can't just slap a bunch of paint on a canvas and and call it art when you really put no effort in it. I don't really understand why it gets so much attention. Unless people put, like, true effort or at least a little bit of effort and passion into something, I'd consider it art. Even if it wasn't someone's best preference, I'd still consider it art if they had put at least a little bit of effort and passion into it. Okay, I'll buy that. What benefits does art provide society? Okay, so when we talk about art, there's a a lot of people will probably think it's just like the drawing aspect of it, but art impacts a lot more than that. Art is music. Art is writing. Art is building. Art can be part of anything. Like I said before, Art is basically when you put effort into something you're passionate about. Even if it's not going to be the best, you still put effort into it, which makes it art. And I feel like a lot of people put effort into a lot of things. Goals can be, goals can be art, even. Like, if you put effort into it, um, your goals can become your own art and can really shape the kind of person you are and shape how other people can view you. So. Interesting take. I'd say art is very important in society. Okay. Does hardship make a person stronger? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, now, with hardship, um, I'm also going to talk a bit about change and hardship at the same time. Because if someone went through something difficult, it's basically a huge change for them. And... Changes normally make people stronger. They need to adjust to the hardship and changes that happen in their life. And I definitely think it makes them stronger. It makes them more able to adapt to their new, to newer problems. And it definitely makes them stronger mentally and possibly physically if, um, if whatever hardship they're dealing with, um, deals with their physical strength. Okay. What do you think or what do you attribute the biggest successes in your life too? Um, my biz- uh, my biggest successes, um, I'd probably kind of contribute them to more or less my personality. Um, I've been known to be very imaginative and creative pretty much most of my life. I always imagined little scenarios, especially when I was younger, and I'd want to, like, play them out. And I'd say that some of my biggest successes come from that imagination because I am really passionate about art and I really like some of, and I really like a lot of the stuff I do. I have expressed my art in many different ways and, um, I definitely think that a lot of, um, the stuff I do with my creativity and and imagination is some of the biggest biggest successes I have. Also with, you know, the ability of being smart. Okay, that makes sense. 
is it better for a person to have a broad knowledge base or a deep knowledge base? So is it better to be a jack of all trades and a master of none or a master of one trade and one trade only? Um, I'd say it's better to be, um, known. I'd say it, be- it would be better to know more trades um, than to just be a master at one because, um, I'm pretty sure we talked about this before, but you probably should have more, s- you probably should know some more skills rather than be great at just one thing because then you're just a one trick pony. Right. Um, and I think we did talk about that and, and your answer is consistent with that. So before I ask this next question, let me kind of set it up. So, There's a difference between intelligence and wisdom. Intelligence comes from learning. Wisdom comes from learning from experience. So intelligence is kind of a book knowledge. Wisdom is real world knowledge. So based on that definition, is intelligence or wisdom more helpful? I'd say wisdom because... Um, I've talked a lot about how people can learn from their experiences and wisdom definitely attributes and wisdom can de- you you can definitely learn with you can definitely gain wisdom from any of your experiences and even if you don't know much about the world you can learn more about you can learn about your world with your own experiences and gain your own wisdom. Okay, that makes a perfect sense. And the last question that we have in this set is, is it better to be a big fish in a small pond or a small fish in a big pond? You know what I'm asking here? Yep. Um, basically, would it be better to know everything and not be able to learn more? Well, I'm going to give an example. Would it be better to know all, most, pretty much everything and not be able to learn much more and know not much but be able to learn a lot? Well, think of it from a different perspective. Think of it as you're going into school, okay? So when you're going into, what grade are you in now? Eighth. Eighth. So when you go into ninth grade, you're going to a new school, right? Mm -hmm. So right now, you're a big fish in a little pond. So you're at the top of the food chain right now, being at the top of the class. Mm. Next year, when you go into ninth grade, you're going to be a small fish in a much bigger pond. So think of it from that perspective and then give me your answer. Okay. Um, um, I'd say it might be better to be a small fish in a big pond. And I'd say that because with that, you can learn more about it, and eventually you will become a big fish in a little pond. Like, it's sort of that development process, well, the big fish in a small pond, you already learned everything you really don't like. Unless you, like, move into an even bigger pond, and then you start the whole cycle again. But I think being a small fish in a big pond gives you more of a chance to expand and learn. So, yeah, I'd say being a small fish in a big pond is better. Okay. So that was all we had for our philosophical questions. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll hit you with some politics questions, Madam President. All righty. For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Thank you. 
Welcome back. We are talking Q&A series today, and we are talking about politics. So, first question in our... Oh, I lost my, my cameras. Uh-oh, hang on. Well, let's go to this one for now. So, the first question in our politics segment is, why does politics matter to you? Okay, so politics matters to me because there's a lot more that goes into it. Politics um, is basically when you kind of choose who um, makes the rules of your world. Well, not the world, but, you know, your country, your state, your town, that kind of thing. And I'd say it matters because you never know if you're going to get a good person or a bad person, especially if, like, you're going through um, something major and something major is going on through the world. You need a, you need a steady, um, you need someone steady to help you through that. And depending on who you pick, is how the f is how everything's gonna go. Okay, good answer. What do you think is the most important issue facing the United States today? Uh, I kind of said this before in the last podcast, but I'd say right now, COVID-19 and um, the hatred going on. Okay. Don't know which one is worse. They're both pretty high on the scale. Understood. What do you think we as a nation can do to elect better people to office? Um, so I'd say that... I'd want to somewhat make it somewhat mandatory to vote because electing people, because voting is very important. And I'd say that it's important to vote, like I said before, like who you vote into, who, whoever you vote into whatever, into whatever position, um, you're voting for, it will, it can determine like your entire lifestyle, like your entire lifestyle could change if like, you elect um, one person, so. That's true. That's very true. Is the Confederate flag a symbol of heritage or a symbol of hate to you? Um, what is the Confederate flag? The Confederate flag is the stars and bars that, that was used during the, Revo the um, Civil War. That's what the South used as their flag. And it's in, it was integrated into a number of state flags from the southern states. So it kind of represents to to the southern states. It represents their their culture, their heritage. It's something that they're proud of. Uh, a lot of people today look at it and say, "Well, that really is a symbol of of slavery and and division and rev uh, not revolution, but uh, you know." being a traitor to your country. So there's different points of views. Do you have a point of view on it? Um, I mean, slavery is bad, and I don't think the South, like, should be, like, should... I don't think it should be good that the South thinks that it's part of their, like, culture. But I do want... But I can understand both sides, like, how the South could say, like, it was part of their history and we shouldn't forget the history, like, at all. Because we're probably going to repeat it if we don't remember it. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also think that it also... But on the other hand, it does kind of symbolize the fact that they... Um, stood for slavery, which, and diverse, and non-diverse, and like, uh, I don't know how to say it, like, discrimination. Discrimination, right. So, yeah. Um, okay. I'll, I'll buy that. So, it's you're kind of split on it. Question five. Should Native American nicknames and mascots be banned from sports teams? Um, I'm... I'm probably going to say no because um once again it's part of history and they and of course they work and I think it would be better to remember them. Of course it's probably not the best for sports teams, but I mean sports are pretty popular so it might be 
so it might be a good way to try and ex- it might it is good to express um the names but i don't know if it, if sports is the best to, way to express it okay should supreme court justices be elected by the people or appointed by the president um well i think it would be kind of fair to let the people um vote because i think just one person deciding it um shouldn't really be allowed because i feel as though um that kind of takes away from the whole voting right of the people because the supreme court is definitely a major impact on our whole um our whole government and to not have us vote um for a supreme court justice but vote for everything else i don't think feels right okay is it a good policy for schools to ban the sale of soft drinks and candy and other questionably nutritious snacks in order to promote better eating habits in our youth well i don't think they should ban well I don't think they should ban it completely. I think they should have it kind of restricted. Because I've noticed that a lot of kids complain about um, some school lunches, especially in elementary schools, saying that they're, like, kind of bad. Um, but in um, middle school, I've definitely seen the lunches get slightly better um, as you get older. I think that, like, you should give the elementary kids at least a little better lunch, but still try and give them a healthy lunch. Um, sort of like, like, you need nutrients for every part of your diet, um, but it's not too bad to have, like, a small little snack given, and I don't think they should be, like, poorly done to where the kids won't even want to eat it, um, so I definitely think changing up the food would be slightly better. Okay. Do you trust the government to only utilize access to your email and other personal information for good causes like crime prevention and anti-terrorist activities? Uh, well, I don't, I think like they could use it for some of the social media stuff, but not really for your personal information. We've talked about privacy before and how important it is, and I don't think it's fair that the government should be looking in your personal private information because privacy is privacy for a reason. And I know they're going to think and I know they're going to think, oh, if you're going to have everything private, then you're probably doing something sneaky. And yes, some people can do that. But a lot of times it's just people who don't want to share the personal information. They could have stuff going on at home that they don't want to share with the government or the rest of the world. Okay. I'll buy that. Should it be legal to give the death penalty to someone who commits a crime as a minor? Um, I don't think, like, um, I don't think it should, you should give a a penalty for someone who commits a crime, um, like, what do you mean by a minor? Someone under the age of 18. Oh, um... Definitely not a death penalty. I don't really understand why they would do the death penalty. I can understand them, like, trying to send them to jail or the juvenile or, like... Well, let's let's look at it from the perspective of school shootings. So you have a, a 16 and 17-year-old kids uh, who go out to school and they shoot and kill a dozen or more people. Should they get the death penalty for that? Uh, hmm. Um, it would depend on the reasoning why they did it. If they did it because they just wanted to and they didn't have anything going on and they just were a little crazy, possibly. Um, but if it was just because they were like stressed and had some mental health issues going on, I think they should like still be like locked away from the rest of the world, but at least given some amount of help. Um, but if they did it just because they wanted to, yeah, they probably, um, I think they wouldn't really want to, um, I don't know. I, like, unless you can help them in a way, and if you try and help them, like, I, I think they shouldn't be, like, 
had the death penalty right away. I think they should just, like, at least try and help them, even if they did it just because and if it doesn't help. Um, then if they get a little more, then if, like, um, it gets a little more dangerous, then maybe the death penalty could, okay. um, be enforced. Are today's video games too violent or sexually provocative? Um. Okay, let's see. Um, I don't think that, um, some video games, yes, um, are a bit too violent, um, and bad for, uh, certain ages, um, but I definitely think that not many video games, um, as long as it doesn't affect the teenager too much, or any of the kid, or anyone who's playing it, um, but I do think that some video games shouldn't really be played by, um, young ages, there definitely are the games that shouldn't be played by the younger people, um, but sometimes those kind of violent video games are kind of useful for kids, because, like, like I said before, people need to vent sometimes, and playing video games was a way that I com somewhat vented, because we would play Call of Duty together after, um, I had end after, um, after I had a bad day, and we'd play it, and we'd have fun, and it was, and although it was somewhat of a violent game, um, it definitely helped me vent a bit, and, um, it helped me, and I didn't have any negative effects from it, so... Okay. I'd say some of the times it's good. Do you think people's political views change over their lifetime? Well, it could. Um, they can start out believing in one thing, and then at some point start believing in something else. Um, people's perspectives can change, but sometimes people are very, um are very prone on their opinion. They will not change it, even if you try to make them. But, like we've said before, change happens, and people can change. So, I'd say that people's political views could change over time. Okay. Do you think too much money is spent on political campaigns? Um... So I'm not entirely sure. I mean... I mean, you're, you're looking at... at presidential campaigns where hundreds of millions of dollars are spent. Um, could you give me an example of a campaign quickly? Well, right now you've got Biden and Trump. You know, Biden and Trump has probably spent over $100 million by this point in time on advertising and TV ads and spots like that. You know, is is that a worthwhile expenditure of that money or can that money should that money be used someplace more constructively? Probably more constructively, because I've seen a lot of the advertisements somewhat bashing on other people, and I don't normally like seeing them, because it just brings more hate in the world, and I'm not exactly... And I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't really want to see that, um, so I don't think it's money well spent. I mean, explaining that they are somewhat of a good candidate, I'd say that would be a little better, but not as intense of... Not so as not intense. money spent on negative advertising, then? Yeah. Okay. What do you think of our country's politicians? Do you trust them? Do you like them? Do you think they have our best interests in mind? Uh, it's complicated. Um, a lot of things I've been go have been going around in the news, and um, it's been shown that a lot of the politicians we have right now are kind of toxic, and... Not exactly the best candidates we could have hoped for. And, um, yeah, I'm having a little bit of, um, problem. I have, I'm having a little bit of, um, issues trusting some of the people, um, in the office. So, I'd say, um, yeah. Okay. I, I don't really trust them. Would you like to be a politician someday? Since we already have you running for president. Uh, probably not. Because, like, although you could get people to, um, to, like, support you, there also are always going to be the people who will disagree with your opinions. Not everyone's the same, and those people can be reluctant with their opinions. Um, 
And especially if you were running for president, like, all the attention's on you, and if you mess up one time, that could, like, mess up your entire career. Also, I don't feel like lying a bunch of times. <laughs> so, okay. I'm pretty sure I don't really want to be a politician. I'm not very... Um, so then that leads yeah. us into the next question, which is, what do you think are the qualities of a good political leader? Um, I'd say someone who is trying to support causes and trying to help the causes, and also people who only, and also for the people who are trying to make the world a better place and are doing, are trying to do it and listen to everyone's opinions. And even if the pin, if they don't agree with the opinions, they at least listen to them and try to adjust their, um, adjust um, themselves to help them. Okay. If you were president and had to have three people to assist you, who would you pick and why? Uh, do they have to be real-world people? Well, theoretically, anybody you, you want to pick. Uh, I'd say, um, someone who, um, uh, three people... Uh, let's see. Mm. I don't exactly know who I'd get to assist me. I don't. Who, who would you turn to for advice? Uh, um, uh, I don't know a lot of people. Okay. Th so theoretically, past, present, live or dead, doesn't matter. Who would you? Oh. Who would you look to? To draw inspiration from. Let's look at it from that perspective. Okay. Um, I'd probably want to go for someone like Abraham Lincoln, um, George Washington, uh, and who else? I don't know. Who else? I'm thinking about other presidents that have supported. Uh, oh, yeah. John F. Kennedy. Okay. That, that was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Because you can certainly draw on their writings and their speeches and stuff like that for inspiration. Question 17. If you could change anything in the world, what three things would they be and why? Uh, if I could change three things. I'd give people of minorities their rights that they deserve. Um, I've said this before. I'd want to give them the rights because they deserve, they're humans. They deserve the same rights. Um, another thing I try to change. I'd want to make it um, safer for people going through um, stuff like this. I'd want to make sure that they had, um, for people who are, who did have, uh, the, d who did have um, the uh, uh, d disease, I'd want them to have some good health care coverage. And I'd also want, um, I'd also want to change the world so that it would be a safer place for what's going on now. Okay. If you could make one rule that everyone in the world had to follow, what would it be? One rule that everyone had to follow. One rule to rule them all. I'd say don't discriminate. Okay. Um, discriminating against people is horrible, whether it be for their race, religion, gender, sexuality, that kind of thing. I don't think it's right, and it never should be right. All right. I think that's very noble. When you get older, which is just a few years away now, do you think you'd vote as a Republican, a Democrat, or an Independent? Total disclosure, mommy is a Democrat and daddy is an independent. Actually, I'm an undeclared, but independent is close. Uh, I probably want to be an independent, um, because depending on the person representing, um, the parties, um, I'd want to see, like, their whole thing because not all, um, of one party are bad or good. Um, so I'd probably want to be more or less independent. I don't really um, choose sides unless it's the person themselves. Okay. And question 20, the last one for our political questions. 
What are the three most important issues that you think our politicians should be addressing today? Um, they hate, um, Black Lives Matter. That's definitely one of the major ones because so far there's been a lot of riots, um, and protests and hate going around in that. And I think that politicians should be addressing it. Um, as well as the coronavirus, of course, we still need to address, um, that, the pandemic going on, so, um, we have to address that, and also the rights of all minorities, like the LGBTQ community, um, all religions and races, that kind of thing, so. Okay. That's all for this segment. We'll be right back. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. We are back with our latest question and answer series here. Uh, we're pushing up against the clock here, so I'm not going to get through all the questions in our miscellaneous section, but I'm going to pick five at random and throw them at you, and we'll, we'll answer them as quickly as we can. Ready? Yep. What do you wish you were more motivated to do? Um, Probably would be to express even more of my creative um outlook i do express it um good enough now but the fact that i'm kind of lazy and procrastinate a bit on it um <laughs> i'd probably want to be more motivated to do that rather than just sit in my room and watch videos all day okay if you were to bury a time capsule today what would you put in it give me three things you'd put in a time capsule uh I'd probably want to give an example of the technology we have. I'd also want to um, put in um, something nature-y and then a little note um, describing what the year has been like. So, Okay. I like it. Uh, what is something that you think kids understand but adults don't? Um, something kids understand that adults don't. I'd say that would be... Um, Oh, okay. Something kids understand that adults don't. Um. Uh. We're answering these quickly, by the I'm way. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank here. All right, we'll skip that question. We'll 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 do that one later. Let me ask you the next next question. Uh, where do I have it? If you could learn the answer. To one question about your future, what would it be? Uh, uh, what's my job? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, that's four. So the last question. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. If you could give every person in the world a gift, what would it be? Um, just one thing. One thing. Um, I'd give them, I'd give them a hug. I'd want to give them a hug at least. Aw, that's cute. Because <laughs> everyone needs to know that they're loved. Everyone needs a hug. All right, we got a couple minutes left. Let me get one or two more questions in. How can you help someone today? Um, I can... Show them that no matter what, I accept them, I care for them, and that there are other people that will care for them. Okay. 
Do you think teens have it easier or harder than my generation? Um, I'd say somewhat. It's kind of the same because we all have our own difficulties um, going through. Teenagers kind of have like mental mental issues, responsibility and manners and stuff. Um, so I'd say it would be um, they are kind of equal. Okay. Every generation has a name these days or a moniker or label of some sort. What should the name of your generation be? Um, um, like, like Gen X, millennials, what do you think, <laughs> what word, what label or what name epitomizes your generation? I think my generation was Gen Z. But what would you call it is what I'm asking. Um, uh, Probably just Gen Z. I really don't have any other name for it. Just Gen Z. Uh, that's exciting. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Last question. If you could trade places with anyone for a day, who would it be? Um, I'd want to trade places with um, you because I'd want to see like what you're going through and understand what. <laughs> it's not that exciting. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a pretty boring day. True. All right, I think that's it. I think we got sort of the gist of, of what these questions were going for here. Uh, we'll be right back. We'll get closing thoughts if you have any and uh, finish up some business of the podcast. All righty. Go for your closing thoughts. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure how to close this up, but I'm just going to say that... Vote. It's important, and everyone should be should vote. Everyone is should be allowed to vote. So please vote. It's very important, especially during the times right now. Okay, I, I didn't think that's the direction you would have gone with that. Didn't but exactly know what this. You know is. what? It was your time. You can do with it what you want. What you want. Yep. Uh, before we go, I do want to invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. If you subscribe, you will get the podcast on your favorite podcast app podcatcher or whatever it is that you use uh, we go live monday mornings at 8 a.m you can catch us on apple podcast spotify google stitcher iHeartRadio, tune in and amazon pretty much any place you can subscribe to a podcast uh, i would also invite folks to reach out to us and give us your feedback you can get us at comment you can email us at comments at insights into things.com we are on Twitter at Insights underscore Things. We are on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Insights into Things podcast and Instagram at Insights into Things. You can catch high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at YouTube.com slash Insights into Things. We stream six days a week on Twitch. You can follow us or subscribe to us if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber. You get a Twitch Prime subscription for free. We are at twitch.tv slash insights into things, or you can get everything for us on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights Into Tomorrow, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights Into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. And that's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.